I am uh, Philip Paps. I, uh, in my day job, I work on embedded systems, and I spend way too much time debugging them. And in my night job, I work on FreeBSD systems, and I also spend way too much time debugging them. And one of the things I notice when debugging systems is that people spend way too much time actually using debuggers instead of using their contents of their heads to think about what, what's going on here and debug the system with their mind instead of spending hours and hours in their debugger. So I wrote this little talk about it and hopefully it will be helpful in your debugging experiences. The next slide. So a wise man once said, uh, and I would like to know who this wise man was because everywhere I find this quote it says anonymous, that uh, debugging is universally anticipated with distaste, performed with reluctance and bragged about forever. So that's a very nice statement and well anticipated with this taste is very easy when you are debugging it's yet another bug so when you're debugging something in a debugger the afternoon is basically wasted you are building a build with debugging symbols you're spending hours on it, and then at the end you'll find, oh, it's something stupid, I should have put another star here in writes to the address and not to the value. So it's always going to be horrible. And then performed with reluctance, once you're in the debugger, once you've got your build with symbols and you found a debugger that works and abort that boots, wait, did I want to step into the function or did I want to just step over it? Oh no, I pressed the wrong key, emulation timed out, board reset, back to the beginning, and well, lots of fun, or not. And brag about forever, well, I spend too much time with debuggers, I'm allowed to brag about them. So, um, who are your enemies? The talk is called um, Detangling and Debugging, Friends in Unexpected Places. If you want to know your friends, you should also know about your enemies. Your first enemy, of course, is going to be the code, and usually other people's codes, because we don't write bugs ourselves, do we? Then another enemy is the operating system. No matter what we are trying to debug, the operating system will always interfere with us. It will try to kill our process. It will try to helpfully keep itself alive. It will not be nice. And then the debugger is our enemy as well. It sucks up all our time and it just does not want to cooperate with us. So the problem with code is very simple. No one, well, not everyone writes readable codes. And this is especially true in the uh, proprietary world. In the open source world, it's better, except in the Linux kernel. That's, if you're trying to debug anything in Linux, it's, um, well, prepare to read horrible things. Uh, some subsystems are necessarily complex, and if you're in the kernel especially, some, some parts of the code will be a couple of hundred thousand lines of code, and if you have to debug them and read them all, it's not going to happen by reading it. And some code is just not easy to follow in your mind, especially when you're, well, when you've got a state machine and you write a little table with a state machine with nine states, so you've got nine rows in your table, and then you've got a couple of transitions, the table gets columns and columns and columns, and trying to follow that in your mind is not going to happen. So, the operating system is another enemy, as I mentioned, and one of the problems with uh, things like Linux is that, well, sometimes you can attach a debugger to a running process, but often you can't or it pretends that you can attach, but then, well, it crashes as soon as you're attached, then you can start over again. This is probably mainly a problem in the embedded world, but I've seen it happen in big systems as well. As soon as you attach a debugger, things go wrong. And it's especially because the kernel thinks it's smarter than you. It thinks, wait, this process, it's trying to do something that it shouldn't do, I should kill it. Yeah, but I want to know what it's doing wrong. Don't kill it, let me see what it's doing. And then there's, uh, well, signals and traps. As soon as the kernel starts to think, oh, something needs to happen, it sends a signal, SIGBUS. Okay, where did that come from? And then, well, you're off, uh, you're off into the deep end and the kernel is just not, not your friend.
And the problem with debuggers, I mentioned that the debugger is your worst enemy. It can be a friend, but usually it's an enemy. It's an amazing amount of work to make a debugger work. You have to first fight with the compiler to make your code build a binary which has debugging symbols. Um, well, sometimes people write code which has if dev debug, uh, blah, 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 end if, and this code has never been tested. So it doesn't compile, so you're going to fight with a compiler. Then you're going to fight with the operating system to actually, well, oh, wait, I don't have enough flash to put this build with signals on them, with symbols on them, eek, and you're off again. And then the debugger is just uh, annoying to use. You have to set it up every time, find the right cables if you're embedded, JTAG, JTAG, JTAG. And then you need to walk through the preconditions. This bug happens once, well, if A and B and C happens, the bug happens. But if A and B and D happens and it doesn't go into C, the bug doesn't trigger. So you have to walk through all your preconditions. And depending on the complexity of the code, it's very easy to get sidetracked. So you're stepping through your code and, ooh, this is interesting, step. Oh, wait, it's falling into an unaligned axis. Hmm. This looks like another bug. And suddenly you're fixing a bug which you didn't know existed, but you find it. And then once you find the bug, you realize, oh, wait, this only happens inside the debugger. It never happens in the real world. So you've, you've been sidetracked, and you spend two hours looking for a bug which really isn't there. Not fun. And well, debuggers are also very prone to failure. This is mainly an embedded problem, I think. But in the big systems world, I can imagine it happening too. Uh, the debugger will die. It will, uh, eventually it will get fed up with you and say, oh, I, I'm fed up, I'm done. And, well, they die. Uh, Heisenbugs, I talked about them before. It's bugs that appear in a debugger but not outside the debugger. That's a pain in the neck. And then another very embedded problem is the hardware watchdog. Um, I'm sure other embedded people agree that hardware people should be shot. <laughs> Your software stops running for five minutes and the board goes into resets. Sometimes when you're stepping into a function and thinking about, oh, what's this doing? Hmm, I'll go ask a colleague and then you ask a colleague to come over. Hmm, emulation timed out, board reset. You horrible hardware person, don't do that. So always have to remember, switch off the watchdog before debugging. So we've had the enemies, now I think we should talk about our friends. Sometimes the code can be our friend, but we have to be clever and sneaky about it. Sometimes the compiler can be our friend, and this is actually a very good friend, but we have to think about it too. It gives you presents. I'll get into that uh, more deeply. And then if you really want to impress your colleagues, you can go into NM and object dump, which are my favorite tools for some reason. And then, okay, the debugger can be our friend, but only if you, well, as a last resort, and if you are sober and really into it, you can use a debugger. So, clever tricks to try in the code. Printf is unbelievably boring. If you have typed 70 or 80 printfs in every function, you're going to get fed up. You're going to write pointers as integers and, well, it's not, not going to be fun. Uh, one of the clever tricks to do, and it's a function I carry with me in my nodes directory, is a stack trace. Just in, uh, whenever your board, whenever your code does something stupid, instead of just crashing and dying, print the stack trace first. Okay, it's lots of magic numbers trolling all over your screen, but they're actually very useful. But only once your board is actually dead, then you copy the copy the stack trace into a, a trace dump program and it will tell you where you've been and usually you can walk up and see, oh, there I've been. Um, another clever trick which I use at runtime is cookies. I just in, in the global area of my program, I write an unsigned long, which is 32 bits on most 32-bit most architectures. And for every function I enter, I twiddle a bit uh, in, this, in this unsigned long and then I collect my bits whenever I crash. And then I can see, oh, I've been here, I've been here, I've been here. Ha, I've not been there. So that might be my problem. It's uh, a poor man's runtime stack tracing, but especially on embedded boards, it can save you an incredible amount of time if, um, yeah, if normal stack drums don't work. And the reason I'm skipping through these slides is because I don't understand how this apple works, Matt. Uh, your best friend when debugging is GCC. 
everything it spews out on standard error is a gift. And when you see these gifts, don't just silence the compiler with a cast. Fix the bug. It, if it says a uh, warning uh, might be writing to a string constant or whatever it says, don't just cast it to a character pointer and hope it goes away. It won't go away. It will die and blast in another way. <laughs> Another clever trick is to use GCC minus capital E. Very few people seem to know about this. It, uh, it goes through the preprocessor and dumps whatever the preprocessor makes of your C file. So you can see all your include files. Well, it'll spam your screen with a lot of garbage, but sometimes it's useful to say, hey, it's including this file and not that one. And that's the one that's wrong, and this one's the one that's right. So clever trick to use. Uh, another one is know your minus W flag. Minus W is for the warnings, usually, or it's overloaded to push things into other tools. But minus W error is very nice. It will, instead of printing a warning into the 22 megabytes of warning your build will produce, it will actually die at, comp at compile time. What you can also do is, inside your code, there's a preprocessor pre directive hash warning, and together with minus w error, it can help you find things that you've forgotten. So inside your code, instead of typing xxx, I need to remember to do something, 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 write hash warning, I need to remember something, 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 and then if you compile with minus w error, it will die at that point and say, oh, you need to do this. Ah, yes, I need to do this. So it can save you debugging time, but, or it can save you even just flashing on an embedded board. Another cute trick which uh, even fewer people know about is the GCC instrumentation functions. Instead of you writing a cookie at the beginning and the end of every function, the GCC instrumentation functions can write it in there for you. It's very magical and inside the kernel it's, it often goes wrong because functions are often in lines and GCC instrumentation functions don't really know much about inlining. So I think the GCC guys have a lot more work to do there, but at the moment they're very useful in, in user space codes, and if you've got the time to look into them, do. You can save yourself lots of time. So uh, as I said, NM and object dump, uh, they can impress your colleagues because your screen will be full of incomprehensible numbers and hex and lots of, lots of magic. Um, the negative aspect is that you actually need to know how your computer works, so what's a register, what's the stack, what's the calling convention, will, it, will I put my function arguments in registers or do I push them on the stack and load them, and load them in my function? So you need to know this. And on Intel platforms especially, you need to make sure that you get rid of the horrible C compiler flag minus F a bit frame pointer. Intel systems are impossible to debug without the frame pointer. Don't do it. And I think uh, we got rid of that in FreeBSD now, but it has been in there for a long time. It's, it's not fun. Uh, if you have a stack trace, uh, you can use object dump to disassemble your binary and then, comp and then look at the, at the fault address in your stack trace and it will tell you pretty much the exact line your code breaks at. If it gives you a fault address which is just outside your stack, you know, hey, I've written through my stack, and then you can walk up and say, ah, that's where I started writing outside my stack. I've got a kilobyte of data on it, and I only have 4K stack, and I'm recursing five times. Hmm. It's particularly useful in uh, trace analysis tools. You write a little script that pushes your binary through an M or through object dump, and it tells you uh, you died there, shows you the registers and uh, the, the other context. It's a uh, useful thread. So GDB output is by default for some obscure reason they print things in decimal. I don't know where they got the idea that this might be useful. Programmers don't think in decimal, we think in hex. So you set in your little GDB in it, you set set output rate x16 and suddenly the numbers start making sense. This is good. Uh, recent uh, GDB versions can print arrays, so instead of just seeing, oh, it's an array, hmm, damn, uh, plus one and then print again, plus one and print, one, print again, you can set, set print array on and GDB will print the array itself until it finds a null pointer and dies and breaks on it. Um, print pretty, I don't know what it does, but people assure me that it's required. So <laughs> if anyone can tell me what it does exactly, I would love to know. Um, one thing you can do with GDB is you can use macros. For instance, if you're debugging kernels, you can write a macro to pretend to be PS, 
and you can get a process list. There's an excellent example in the FreeBSD source tree of a GDB init file. I think John Baldwin wrote it, which has things like PS and netstat and other friends right in your GDB. So you can uh, run a kernel core through GDB, and you can type PS, and you've got a list of all the processes, and then you can select every process and walk down the stack of the processes and see where it went wrong. That's very nice. And you can also write macros to pretty prints, often inspected structures, so you don't have to go through the dance uh, p, foo struct, pointer to, member, whatever. Just write a little function and it will tell you these things by magic. Uh, another thing to remember in the embedded world is that GDB server doesn't need symbols. And if you have very little memory or very little flash space, this is a useful fact to remember. You don't need to put a binary with symbols on your board. Just have it where you're debugging, and GDB server will magically deal with it. Uh, a fun aspect of this is that sometimes you can get away with not always building your code with debugging symbols, because you're too lazy, or your colleagues forget that if def debug end if needs to be tested too. So you have a, an old, a weak old binary on your workstation with debugging symbols and the board crashes somewhere you've not touched in the last week, then sometimes you can get away with using that binary to debug. GDB will get very upset if you walk into a function and try to debug one of which you don't have symbols, but if you happen to have symbols for somewhere it does crash, you can get away with it and you've saved yourself a couple of hours of building. In summary, I raced through these slides. Uh, debugging is boring. We want to try to avoid it as much as possible. It's just try not to debug, try to think first, and take shortcuts. Um, it, you're allowed to cheat, it's, it's debugging, you've already broken something, so cheating is not going to make it any worse, it's only going to make it better. Uh, remember who your friends are, there's lots of interesting tools in the tool chain which few people seem to remember, but which are actually very useful, like NM and object dump. And then remember to document your clever, clever tricks, at, works, we, at work, we have a wiki page where we put up our clever tricks, and this is the bragging step, really. I spent all afternoon debugging this, and I could have spent three or four hours if only I knew about this tool. So write about your tools, write a presentation about your tools. This is my presentation. So it's, yeah, debugging is boring. Don't do it, and um, write documentation. So is anyone actually still awake? <laughs> this, yeah, yeah, okay, some people are. Now it's your turn. Questions, comments, what can I learn from you? And how fast have I raced through this? Very fast. <laughs> Unbelievable. So any questions or comments? Please. Everyone is asleep. Nobody? Help. <laughs> no, it was a pretty short presentation and I raced through it and I'm sorry if I talked way too quickly. <laughs>